On today's episode of You Asked, are there any perfect LCD panels and what's an acceptable level of imperfection? 8-bit plus FRC versus true 10-bit. Do you need HDMI 2.1 for Dolby Vision? And understanding Samsung soundbar model codes. Welcome back everyone, I'm Caleb Dennison. I'm feeling great. I hope you're having an amazing day as well. This is You Asked, the show where I answer questions that you asked in hopes that I can help you and others who have the same tech questions. If you've got a question that you would like to see answered on the show, please send it to you asked at digitaltrends.com and I'll do my level best to get it answered. Okay, let's get into it. Gary Scott writes, I was wondering if you could take a look at the pictures of my screen and give me your thoughts on uniformity, etc. There seems to be an odd tint at the edges. Okay, so to illustrate, we'll show a few of Gary's pictures as we talk about LCD panels and uniformity. But first off, here's my response. So Gary, I took a look at your photos and that tinting around the edges is pretty typical. Usually it'll be more pronounced at the corners. Uh, LCD panel uniformity has never been perfect and even the very best will show that kind of fringe tinting. Based on what I'm able to see in your photos, I'd say that overall you have a very clean panel. I'd probably give it an A plus for an LCD TV. If it were an OLED, then we'd have an issue. But for LCD based TVs, yours looks very clean overall with minimal dirty screen effect. Thankfully, this shouldn't be noticeable during normal viewing situations, save some very specific instances. For instance, you may notice it slightly when watching golf or ice hockey matches. Those are the times where you have huge patches of mostly uniform color. Of course, I'm just looking at photos, which may underplay the effect. It's hard to tell if it's more severe than what I see in the photos, but based on what I do see here, it appears your TV is in pretty good shape overall. What I see here with lesser TVs is much, much worse. Next up, Josh Collins writes, was wondering about what in the world frame rate control is. I can't find any good explanations beyond you won't notice the difference. Uh, thanks, Josh. So when looking at TVs and computer monitors, you'll usually see FRC in the context of the panel description. You may see that a TV has an 8-bit panel or 8-bit with FRC or a 10-bit panel. The FRC stands for frame rate control. And what most folks wonder is, what's the difference between a 10-bit panel and an 8-bit plus FRC panel? So taking a step back, the 8-bit and 10-bit in this case refers to how many colors the TV or monitor can display. An 8-bit panel can display a little over 16 million colors, which is a lot, but a 10-bit panel can display a little over a billion colors, so not a small difference. Now, HDR requires that a display cover more than the 16 million colors that an 8-bit panel is limited to. So. For HDR, you want either a 10-bit panel or 8-bit with FRC. Here's the difference from a technical standpoint. A 10-bit panel can display any of those 1 billion plus colors from any of its pixels at any moment and at any refresh rate. So it doesn't matter if you're watching 24 FPS film content, 30 Hertz or 60 Hertz TV content, 120 Hertz game content, the 10-bit panel can show any of those 1 billion plus colors at the drop of a hat. Now, an 8-bit plus FRC panel can also cover all 1 billion plus colors, but it does so by showing two different colors in super rapid succession. This process is also called dithering, by the way. So if we have a pixel on an 8-bit panel with FRC, and that pixel needs to display a particular shade of red that's beyond the display capabilities because it lives in that 10-bit color space, the 8-bit panel will use frame rate control to switch between two different shades of red so fast that your eye perceives it as the intended 10-bit shade of red. It's technical trickery and it works great. There is only one caveat, and that is that an 8-bit plus FRC panel has to use the refresh rate of the TV to pull this off. So you could run into situations where perhaps you want ultra high frame rate content and 10-bit color reproduction, and that just wouldn't be possible. But I'm talking about trying to get 240 hertz refresh rates with 10-bit color at the same time. How often do you need that? Well, if you do, then get a 10-bit native panel. Otherwise, don't worry about it. 
You know, as I read all that, it sounds a little bit like gobbledygook. So let me be clear. The panel is gonna switch between two colors so fast that it makes a separate color. It's like blending colors at the same time because your eye can't keep track with the fast switching. Does that make sense? I hope so. Anyway, now you know what FRC is, mystery solved. Next up, Alex Padilla writes, what approach would you recommend to utilize the Dolby Vision functionality of my Apple TV 4K and my Panasonic UB820, given that my Sony X95K TV has two HDMI ports that support Dolby Vision, but one is the eARC port. I'm leery of using an HDMI female to male Y cable. So Alex, I promise I'm not trying to be glib here, but the approach you'll wanna use is to banish from your mind the idea that only two of your HDMI ports support Dolby Vision. All four of your X95K TV inputs support Dolby Vision. You just may need to go into the TV's menu system and tell the TV to enable Dolby Vision for the HDMI port you wanna use. I'm gonna tell you how to do exactly that. But first, in an effort to help as many folks as I can around this, I wanna make it clear to everyone watching that you do not need HDMI 2.1 to enjoy Dolby Vision. According to Google, that's actually a frequently searched question. So hopefully we're going to dispel that myth. You do need an HDR capable TV that supports Dolby Vision, but I can't recall a TV I've reviewed in the last four or five years that only supported Dolby Vision on just some of its HDMI ports. You may, however, have to manually enable 4K HDR for your HDMI ports though. This is often done automatically these days. You send the TV an HDR signal and it goes, ah, okay, we need to go enable 4K HDR and it'll just do it and display a message that it's doing exactly that. On some Sony TVs, however, you may have to manually enable what Sony calls enhanced HDMI. And this, Alex, is where you might have gotten confused if the confusion didn't just stem from thinking you needed HDMI 2.1 for Dolby Vision. So here's how you do it, and I'll explain why this can be confusing for everyone. Click the settings button on your remote or click the settings cog in the upper left of your screen. Then from there, go to channels and inputs, and then click external inputs. Scroll down and click HDMI signal format. Now I'm showing you this on an A95K, but the X95K has the same setup you're gonna see four options. Standard format, enhanced format, enhanced format Dolby Vision in parentheses, and enhanced format VRR in parentheses. And this is how it starts getting confusing. You will only see enhanced format Dolby Vision and enhanced format VRR as options for two of your HDMI ports. See down here? Now that's because those are the HDMI 2.1 ports. And because when you're using those ports, you can have Dolby Vision or you can have VRR, but you cannot have both at the same time. So Sony makes it clear that you're selecting between one or the other. However, in doing things this way, it might make you think that the other two ports, which just have enhanced format listed as an option, it makes you think that maybe those won't do Dolby Vision. And that's just not the case. Selecting enhanced format will get you Dolby Vision on those ports. It's no wonder that Sony changed this in its 2023 TVs. Anyway, Alex, connect your Blu-ray and Apple TV to HDMI 1, 2, or 4. That'll leave your eARC port open and just turn on enhanced format for the HDMI ports that you wanna use for HDR. You will then get the Dolby Vision that you want, need, and deserve. Neiman from Germany asks, I wanna buy a Samsung HWQ600C. That's a soundbar. But the problem is I am confused by the different names that they have. There's the Samsung HWQ600C, the Q600B, the Q610B, and the Q610B slash ZG. Neiman goes on to say, how can I understand the differences between these kinds of naming? What is the difference between these models? And in your idea, which one delivers a better sound quality? So Neiman, the first one that you listed, the Q600C, is a 2023 model. The other three are 2022 models, and all three of those are essentially the same, but they're targeted at different regions or countries on our lovely planet. In Samsung's model naming convention, the numbers after the Q refer to the series. In this case, 
you're looking at the 600 series soundbars. The letter that follows references the model year. So A is 2021, B is for 2022, and C is for 2023. And I presume D will be for 2024 when those come out. Now, as you can see, options two, three, and four that you've listed are all 600 series soundbars from the model year 2022. I think 600 is used in the US and 610 in the UK and probably parts of Europe. That ZG is a tricky one though, but that is like a country subcode, I think. It doesn't really matter though, because the Q600B or 610B is gonna be the same. As for the difference between the Q600B and the latest Q600C, well, technically I can't find any big differences, not easily anyway. The Q600C may support linear PCM, that's if you wanted to send it an already decoded signal for some reason. But I think the only meaningful difference is gonna be the price. Since the 2022 models are discontinued and a bit older, they're gonna be a bit less expensive. If you can find a brand new 2022 model from an authorized retailer, uh, so the warranty is intact, you might as well buy that one. That's the B model. If not, the C model should be easily available, but I wouldn't expect any better performance from it. Guys, thanks so much for watching. You clearly like this series and I'm so thankful, but I'm always looking to do better. So leave me a comment down below about what you think we can do better with this series. Don't forget to like and subscribe. I'll see you on the next one. And until then, here's two other videos I think you might like. Did we get through that? Yeah.